Hi, welcome to the next lecture of Financial Statement Fundamentals. How to understand the story of any business at any time. In this lecture, we're going to talk about accrual accounting. Another important accounting foundation concept. Okay, just before we go any further, I recently received some advice about not only being an anonymous voice on the end of a computer. So I was trying, uh, I thought I'd try and build a connection and include some photos of myself so you can see what I look like and know I'm a real person and I do exist, not a robot. Uh, this is me and this is me doing my best to look professional, which is um, uh, not very often, but that, I thought I'd start off with hopefully, <laughs> hopefully my most professional uh, photo I've got. It was taken by um, a professional photographer and I was giving a speech as part of a ceremony uh, to say thanks to um, a team that I was in for doing some work at the university uh, that I studied and worked at. Okay, but anyway, back to the lecture. Accrual accounting. Now, this is the key ID. Income is recognized when earned. Expenses are recognized when incurred. And this has nothing whatsoever to do with when cash is actually paid or received. This is accrual accounting. Now just stick with me here. We'll get stick throughout the whole lecture. It'll make more sense as we go along. All right, let's start with an example. All right, with my own business, Akofina, you see the logo every time at the end of the lecture, I sell books through Amazon. Now, Amazon pays me royalties for these book sales 60 days after the end of the month. So, if I sell a book on the 14th of January, this would mean that Amazon pays me that royalty for that book sale around the 31st of March. Now, when do I recognize that royalty revenue in my financial statements and my financial records? Now, we've got multiple choice here. Is it the 14th of January? When the book is sold, is it the 31st of March when Amazon pays me the cash, the royalty? Or is it the 2nd of August when my pet dog has his birthday? Hopefully you won't pick C. The correct answer, according to accrual accounting, is the 14th of January. This is when the income is earned. And I'm sorry about the bad joke. Um, so it's, it's when the income is earned. It's when the book was sold. That's when I earned the income. That's when I was owed the royalty. It had nothing to do with when I was paid the cash on the 31st of March. I record my revenue on the 14th of January when I earn the income. And the next thing about accrual accounting is that this means that sometimes financial statements have non-cash items. Specifically, this means that there are recorded transactions and adjustments in the financial statements and the financial records where there's been no financial cash transfer that has taken place. All right, just work with me. All right, so we went through the example that there was the January 14th book sale in the income that was, that was described earlier. So in short, we recorded income January 14th, no cash transfer has taken place. But there are also items like depreciation expenses, impairment losses, accrued interest, and many others where no cash transfer has taken place, but there are records in the financial statements. All right, so we're trying to put these concepts together. Now, why on earth do accountants use accrual accounting? What it is, it's the accountant's attempt through estimations at describing the economic reality of the business, not just the cash movements. Accountants, including you, want to describe the economic performance and position of the business, not just the cash performance and position. Now, why is this so important? And you, and I can, I can, I can, I can feel it. I can feel it in your bones. You're not convinced here. This is confusing. All right, forget the short time frame example of uh, my Akofina's Amazon book sales between January and March. Now think about Boeing selling 787 Dreamliners to the government-owned Emirates airline. 
In this example, in 2015, Boeing would take an order for 20 Dreamliners. In 2016, Boeing would build five of these Dreamliners. In 2017, Boeing built five more of these aircraft. Now, I don't know how realistic this example is. I don't know much about aircraft manufacture and so forth, but I do know that it takes an epic amount of time to build an aeroplane and government entities don't seem to pay very quickly. So let's continue on. In 2018, Emirates makes a 15% payment on the full order and Boeing finishes manufacturing the final 10 aircraft. In 2019, over time, Boeing delivers the 20 Dreamliners to Emirates in the Dubai hub. And in 2020, the Boeing manufacturing staff have a very long project completion party. And then in 2021, two years after the Dreamliners have been delivered, five years after the the, the aircraft are first being manufactured, Emirates pays the remaining 85% outstanding on the order. All right, so let's, let's imagine Boeing's financial statements without accrual accounting and we'll base it simply on cash. In that case, in 2018 and 2021, when Emirates made the payments, Boeing would recognize the revenue when the cash was paid. On the other hand, in 2015, 2016, 2017, 2019, and 2020, Boeing's income statement is a sparse, empty wasteland showing zero activity. How useful would these statements be to managers, investors, creditors, tax authorities, and everyone else if we recorded accounting transactions in this way? So with accrual accounting, Accountants make estimates. They take to use their best judgment. And with this, we have accrual accounting and Boeing statements which show manufacturing activity in all years, perhaps except that party year in 2020, I think it was. It would also show the best estimates of revenue and expenses in all years. And it would also show, it would also show the best estimates of, of the economic reality in the balance sheet too.